Michelle from Crafters Countdown, and we are continuing with our rock painting series. This is our October one. You can see some of the Halloween rocks that I've got in front that I've actually painted. But for those of us who feel like we don't paint well, and of course I did do the, um, but I can't draw for Father's Day this year. So if you feel like you're in that category, be sure and check that video out. But, um, but also some people just don't really care for it. And so I wanted to teach you another option for decorating your rocks for Halloween specifically, but you can come up with ideas for other um, holidays as you count down with this kindness rock project also. So um, I do have rocks, so we're still doing the rock thing. And I have painted these so that they're um, white on the edges and black in the center because now these were made by a friend of mine, Dee Dee, and these are little skulls and there are instructions online how to make these skulls. There are different ones. So this one's kind of more round eyed and a little more traditional, kind of more cutesy. Uh, this guy looks really angry. So there's a different skull. And again, if you just Google crochet skulls, then um, you'll find different tutorials and instructions on how to make the different skulls. The best thing to do is use use a pretty small needle. You want to use, um, I, for what I did, I did an E. These were both made by Dee Dee. And um, it is easier to crochet your skull and then see if you can find a rock that it fits on. Um, I tried doing it the opposite way and this is absolutely what's best. So um, this one, this guy goes on this one and I found one that's pretty well shaped for that as well. And then this guy gets to go on this rock. I'm an eyeballer and so um, that's why these already have the black on here. Just sort of set that down and eyeballed where the black needed to go in order to give him a black background for where his eyes and teeth and nose shine through. Um, if you wanted this to be any other color, just use your imagination. It doesn't have to be black and white. Now, um, did the same thing on this guy, did some eyeballing here and turn that around. And it still isn't quite covering down here. Um, you know, the shape of the rock goes narrow there. So once you've done some eyeballing work there, if you find that it doesn't quite match up, you can grab a pencil and um, go ahead and just mark inside where the edge of the teeth would be. And that gives you some pencil marks on here then you're able to paint that in to where it needs to be in order for that to work. So I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit more black on here. You don't have to have crisp lines on the edges there. Um, it's not going to necessarily show, but I kind of like to have crisp lines, so I'm going to square it up. All right, we'll set this aside to dry. Now, I was so inspired by the skulls that I thought, wow, what else could we crochet? So I made a little spider. So I'm going to show you how I made this spider um, here on video, but if you go to Crafters Countdown on Facebook, I will make sure that I post the instructions there step by step. Since it's a Black Widow, I did go ahead and put the signature uh, tie, red bow tie on, on her belly there. This is just tied on to the rock. Um, this rock I painted with a crackle. And um, I've done this one with a crackle also. And I will say I'm not overly fond of um, this brand that it did. It just isn't working very well for me. I've seen some really great crackle paint jobs and this one's not doing it. But I thought the brown so that there was a little bit of contrast but nothing too bright. And then this guy or girl, it's a female if she's black and has the uh, bow to red bow tie, I just, instead of tying off the string, 
I went ahead and um, left it long and then tied it to the other end. So it's tied here in the back and it was disconnected here. And then I have the other string from finishing the body and I wrapped it around this way. And then um, you can just take and put your needle in one of the loops of the neck and pull that through. And then you can pull it as tight as you need it in order to get that to stay on there. And then make sure that you inside there put your label if you want someone to post that they found this. And um, that was a lot of fun. So that one's tied on. This guy's going to get tied on. It's easier to tie on the really large ones, but with the small ones, you also can glue them or Mod Podge them down. I know that um, Dee Dee, the one who made this, said that she was Mod Podging them. So I will go ahead and Mod Podge this guy onto this rock. Hadn't applied any yet for the coat. Because the yarn will absorb some of your Mod Podge, you do want kind of a thicker coat there. And this will make it a little bit shiny as it shines through also. And then you simply place the face on there and pull it over a little bit where um, so it covers the black. Give it a couple of squeezes and then that will um, be adhered to there once it's dried. At our Crafters Countdown YouTube channel, we are working on getting up some how-to crochet videos. We'd love to get some how-to knit videos up as well, and then we're working on cross-stitch for the designs that we have. So please subscribe to our channel and watch for those coming up, probably right after Christmas, um, because Jessica Kringle's working really hard right now on getting some videos up for us. But go ahead and start it the way that you normally would, and then you're going to chain six. And then put your needle into the first loop that you did, yarn over and pull through both to create a loop. So there's your loop. And then you're going to do 12 single crochet inside this loop. And then you go into the top of the first stitch that you made and go ahead and do a slip stitch to connect it and make it perfectly round. If you were to want to make a really small spider on a very small rock, then you wouldn't go around again. But since we're going to go ahead and go around again, I want to show you how to increase. So you're going to chain one, and then you half double crochet into the very first stitch there. And then you're going to two half double crochet into the next stitch. And then you're going to one half double crochet into the next stitch. And then two and one, two and one, all the way around. get to the end you're going to go ahead and again do a slip stitch to make it a round circle and we will go ahead and finish this off go ahead and leave yourself a bit of a string there so that you can have something with which to tie it if you need to later now to do the body we're going to start out the same way we want the body a little bit larger than the head we're going to do half double crochets in our loop instead of um, single crochets for the first row Set. We're going to, just like we did last time, do one and then two and then one and then two in each of the loops going around, but we're going to do a double crochet. So the first thing you want to do is chain three 
And that counts as one double crochet and then go ahead and double crochet into that very first stitch. So that's like having two in the first one. And then in the next stitch, you're going to do one double crochet. And in the next stitch, you'll do two. And then all the way around. And this increasing helps to not pull it and pucker it um, as you're going around the circle. It, it helps give it some spread so that you're not um, ending up with more of a bowl shape or a cone instead of something that can lie flat. Okay, and then when you get to the last one, you're going to just do one because remember there was two when you started and then go ahead and slip stitch into the third stitch of the three chain stitches that you did so that it forms its circle. And now that we've gone around once for the body, we're going to go ahead and do that exact same thing again. So chain three, double crochet into the next stitch. And that counts as your two, remember that first one. And then we're going to double crochet in the next stitch and two double crochet in the next stitch all the way around. And then what we're going to do is pick up the head and opposite where the string is, you're going to go ahead and slip stitch into the next three stitches of both the head and the body. So you're sort of sewing them together. So go into a stitch in the next stitch in the body, go into the next stitch in the head and pull it through and slip stitch. And then do that one more time. So we have done it three times total. All right. Now you've got your little eight there. Okay. And then what we're going to do is single crochet into the next three stitches of just the body. So we're getting a collage of stitches here doing all of these. All right. And then for this sized spider, these legs are, I did I chained 17 and then when I turned and single crocheted into the first one that makes 16 stitches. So these are um, 16 stitches long. I thought if they were any shorter they looked a little weird. So um, you could make them longer if you wanted to but also if you're using a smaller rock or a larger rock then you would want to um, first of all adjust your needle size, make your needle just a little bit larger. But second of all, you could definitely add more stitches if you wanted her little legs to be any different size there. So I'm going to chain 17. And then when you've chained your 17, you're going to single crochet in the second stitch from your hook and then go ahead and single crochet in each one of these stitches across. If you liked thinner legs, you could definitely slip stitch if that's your choice. Um, I thought that this looked better as a single crochet. But as my boss used to say, you do you. That's part of what is fun about these kinds of things is you don't have to always follow instructions exactly. You know, come up with your own experiment a little bit. And I think that these things will make you a better crocheter also because you start learning by experimenting for yourself what does what and what works and what doesn't. So um, play around with this. I just happen to like the single crochet legs the best. So you wanted super fat legs, you could do a half double or a double. You're doing a huge rock and a huge spider. Spiders freak me out, so 
A lot of my friends thought it was really funny that I was even doing this. It's like it doesn't look real enough. I guess if I, if I left it on the floor, <laughs> it would. If I saw it in public hidden somewhere, I would think twice before picking it up. All right, so we've done the 16 for her first little leg. And now we're going to single crochet back into her body in the next two stitches. One, two. And then we'll do this again. We will chain 17, single crochet back to the 16, do two single crochets into her body, and continue around until she's got four legs on this side. So give me just a minute. I'll be right back with you while I do that. All right, so she's got four legs on this side. And now you need to get around to the other side to start her other set of legs. So now I'm going to go ahead and single crochet in the next eight stitches. The important thing is, is that you are 10 stitches away from the base of the neck or where it starts on the opposite side so that you can do the pattern of putting the legs back on there. This one I did make a little bit bigger, so I needed 13 stitches across the bottom. Um, to get to the other side just to get 10 away from the neck. So eight single crochets into the next eight stitches of the body. And now I'm going to follow the pattern that I did before where I chain 17, turn, um, single crochet in the second chain from hook and then single crochet in the next 16 stitches across, single crocheting in the next two stitches on the body and continue that until I get back up to where I've done four legs and then I will do three single crochets to up to the head. So give me just a moment to finish that. All right, and then I simply finish off. I'm going to leave quite a long string, especially since I don't know how long I need this to tie it on. And try to straighten those legs out a little bit. Very curly. And there we have a little fun spider that we can put onto one of our rocks. So I can use the one from its head to tie it around this way and just attach it to the back side. And then this one around the neck, I can tie it there. And she will be nice and secured to this rock and then I can hide it somewhere where someone can find it and hopefully they will feel like I was kind to them and not mean from scaring them. So since this rock belongs to this little girl, I get to take this and go rock hunting now. Be sure and join us next month. We're going to talk about quilt rocks and I will show you a really fun Halloween quilt rock when I do the collage at the end. So thanks so much for joining me and I will see you next month. Bye-bye.